Welcome artists to Monet Cafe Studio and this lesson I'm calling everything you need to know to paint with pastels. I think this is one of the best beginner lessons that I have had in my teaching career. So sit back, relax, enjoy. And in this lesson, I will also share with you a product that is so affordable for beginner pastel artists. The quality of these pastels is great and the price is great and the color palette is wonderful too. So welcome to this tutorial and let's get started. And to start, I'd like to share that this is the abbreviated version on the Monet Cafe YouTube channel but you'll get plenty of instruction with this lesson and I'll tell you how to get the full version later. Now let's talk about these supplies. For this lesson, you'll only need one set of soft pastels and a sanded soft pastel surface. I was very excited to receive this set of pastels made by Color Block. It's their 100 set of pastels. And I was overjoyed to realize you can actually create a painting using just one set of pastels. I do love this cover that they have on the box that actually has all of the color names and numbers. That is such a great idea. And they all look pretty accurate to the actual colors that are in the box. And something I love about this particular tutorial is you only need two products to get started, really this set of pastels and the pastel surface that I'll talk about in just a minute. I was very impressed with the color assortment and arrangement of these pastels. And while I talk about their palette of colors, I think it'll be a nice lesson in color theory for beginner artists. I really like the arrangement of this palette of colors. I particularly like how it is arranged by color and value to a degree. And there are a few other things that I notice about the set. I find that a lot of soft pastel sets that have a decent quantity have a lot of yellows. And while this one does have a, a decent amount of all these warm colors, it's not over the top. There's a really nice assortment of yellows. Again, by value, look at this. We go from light. We've got three different values uh, of this really light, pretty lemony yellow, kind of a neutral yellow, another one that's kind of neutral. It's another thing I want to point out is some of their neutrals, but I'll get to that. Some nice, bright, brilliant colors, highly saturated colors, and then we get to some of the more ochre yellows as well, and a nice peachy yellow here. And then we move on. This is arranged similar to the color wheel. We move on to more of the warm uh, yellows, which turn to like a peachy tone, and then eventually into pinks and more uh, cool reds and warm reds. So on this column, we're going from pinks, beautiful, brilliant pinks, some light values to orange colors. And here we're getting into our, our cool reds are right here. And I find there's uh, more cool reds in this set than there are warm reds. Um, warm reds are more like that brick red. Um, but a great assortment of reds uh, nonetheless. And then we move on to some of our more earthy brown, like burnt sienna, raw umber type of colors. And now we're getting to some of my favorites, which are the magentas and the purples. Just like I noticed a lot of sets have an overabundance of yellows, I noticed that many sets have an underabundance of purples. And while this isn't a huge amount of purples, it's, it's these magentas here. I, Magenta leans, it's kind of a warm, a very warm purple. Um, this is still more than most sets have. So we've got these nice magentas here. One's a little darker, one's a little more saturated. Nice, easy, lighter lavender. Beautiful, this color is really beautiful here. It, it's almost a little bit of a periwinkle blue. I always say it's in between purple and blue. Very pretty color. Nice deeper purple here. And this one's a bit more punchy with some vibrancy. Now we've got a gorgeous assortment of blues. The blues, again, I love the uh, color accurate layout, I should say, according to the color wheel, of going from our warmer blues to our cooler blues. And then we get warmer again with some of these teals. So these are, I would say, sky teal colors. Um, and these are going to be a little bit more highly saturated here. But we've got some nice sky blues here. This one's a little more turquoise. I would use this a little bit more at the horizon line and just some beautiful blues here. Now here is an example of a definitely a periwinkle blue here and it's definitely more blue than this one but I uh, love these two colors together and just some nice easy blues more like an ultramarine blue here. Nice darks too. Let me point that out while I'm at it. 
Um, there are a lot of sets that are lacking darks, but we've got some nice darks here with the blues. Nice, dark, deep green, tealish green colors here. And we've got a nice dark green here. And of course, we've got some very neutral darks, three of them here, and um, a black. I don't usually use black, but uh, I prefer to mix a few darks together. So that's really nice. We've got a pretty nice darks over here too as well. And again, nice assortment of neutrals, not just these neutrals over here. I love the fact that it has the neutrals all in a column here. But we've got um, intermingled throughout some neutrals within color categories. That's a nice neutral teal there. We've got kind of some nice neutrals. And this is a, a little bit more neutral. Again, not as, not as punchy as, say, one like this. Um, so that was really nice to see as well. And again, we're going to our green column here. We've got some beautiful, really vibrant yellowy greens. Now we're getting more of those grassy greens here. Um, going again to some deeper, pretty middle value greens, a nice darker, kind of a neutral green here, another darker, but yellowy green. And again, some nice neutral. These are pretty greens right here. These are beautiful for like distant trees and another, um, pretty, uh, earthy kind of a yellowy green here. Um, again, nice neutrals here, loving these colors. So I've kind of already talked about all these nice neutrals over here, but all in all, this set is arranged beautifully by color and value. It looks like it has just about everything a beginner artist could want when it comes to color and value. And now comes the test of putting it to practice, getting these pastels and putting them to use and creating a painting. Now I have a pet peeve about taking wrappers off of pastels, just call me lazy, but I have a little trick I can show you to make it faster. Fortunately, these wrappers come off pretty easily, but let me do a speed uh, version of this and show you my trick. So what I do is take an X-Acto blade, make sure it's really sharp, and I basically just cut off the label. Now try not to cut it where it's overlapped. There's like double paper there. And choose a side where it's just nice and thin. And I also recommend doing this not on super, super soft pastels. If you do, um, just be careful. So you can see how I'm just cutting off the label and uh, it works great. Now I'm gonna speed this up. While I do this, let me also mention one thing I love about this set of pastels and this pastel demonstration and lesson is that when I'm painting, you can see the actual colors I'm using. So if you get this set, you'll be able to choose my exact colors, and that's very helpful. Oh, look at this mess, but boy, that was so much easier. In the full version of this lesson, I talk more about where these pastels fall in the range from hardness to softness. Within the soft pastel family of pastels, some of them lean a little harder and a little softer, and there are advantages to each, and I would say these are more in the middle. I'll have a link to these pastels in the description of this video, but as I always say, use whatever you have. The surface that I'm using is a professional sanded pastel paper made by UART. It comes in different grits or grades. This one is 400. Now, unfortunately in humid climates, this paper can curl. In the extended version of this video, I give my little trick for how to flatten out UART paper. Basically, I just use a board and some tape and you can check that out if you get the full version of this video. But as I stressed with the pastel supplies, use whatever you have. There are other pastel surfaces you can use, so feel free to get creative. I will say that a sanded pastel surface is going to give you better results than an unsanded surface. Okay, it's time to paint. I typically like to work upright, and part of the reason I do is I've gotten used to being able to back away from my painting and you really can get a better idea of your whole composition and your work if you can back away from it. And another reason I usually work upright is because pastel dust, if you work upright, it will fall. I have a little catcher on my easel that will catch the pastel dust and you don't breathe it as much. When you work flat like this, your face is near your painting and often even your breath will blow pastel dust back up um, for you to breathe. And that's not as much of a concern here, however, because these pastels are not as soft as some of the softest pastels. So if you prefer working flat, it's better to use harder to medium hardness soft pastels. So I think I'll be okay uh, working flat with this one. And it's also an easier way for me to show you these pastels while I'm creating this painting.
Now, the image that I'll be painting is one that's kind of a common theme for me. I really love painting landscapes, so I'm just going to create a, a scene with a field and some trees and some distant trees and keep it very simple. So I will first just start creating kind of a horizon line that's a little bit lower, kind of uh, in a lower, not quite a lower third, um, but just a little bit lower in the composition, um, not halfway. For this version, I am speeding up the footage at this point, but just so you know, you can slow down things on YouTube. You just go to the gear icon at the lower right and you can choose a slower speed. Also, you're going to be getting commentary from here forward, but if you would like the full version with all real time and lots of commentary, here's how you do it. You have two options. You can become a patron of mine on my Patreon channel. You support this channel. You get hundreds of videos with extra instruction and you get to become part of my Patreon family. But you can also buy the full version. If you just don't like subscriptions, I have a Patreon shop and you can buy the one lesson. Okay, let's get back to painting. Now I am finishing my sketch. Look how simple it is. It's just some simple trees on either side of the horizon line and a few distant trees in the back. Now I am picking the darks out of this set. There are a few nice darks. They're not super dark, but they're dark enough for my needs for this painting. I really was very pleased with um, all of the values in the set. And so now I'm turning, notice how I break the pastels. Um, I'm not doing it now, but later I actually break them um, one section more like a third and the other like two thirds. So you get a piece that's um, kind of shorter and a piece that's kind of longer. And the reason I do that is the sticks unbroken are too large for me to lay on their side like this. So I have this nice little piece and notice how I'm just scumbling in those shapes, those big shapes. This is called blocking in. Now what I'm doing is I'm creating some darker value like a little path or a trail. This is where my deeper grasses are going to be. And now I'm getting my next dark. It's kind of a nice dark green. Now why am I using a second dark? The colors just look kind of bland if you just use one color and really in nature there are different colors. So I find that when you're creating your first value or really throughout the painting it's best to layer colors and combine colors. Now this is a dark kind of burgundy and I'm just lightly scumbling it all over where I already put my darks. Now I'm picking some warm colors. And here's where I'm breaking it one third and two thirds. You kind of saw how I did that there. And why am I doing this? Well, what is underneath grasses? It's the earth, it's the ground. And if I just painted green right on that kind of creamy color, those greens would be quite boring. So I'm getting me down some warmth underneath it. Now I'm getting me some pastels ready to get in some sky colors. And I've got some nice lights um, to use. Again, I'm gonna use a combination of colors. I've got kind of a periwinkle blue, a nice pink, and here's a yellow. I can't remember, yeah, I guess I did use that yellow. Again, breaking them into a little uh, one third and two thirds section. I'm getting this periwinkle kind of up towards the top of the sky. And colors typically get warmer in the sky the closer you get to the horizon. So I've got a little bit of the yellow down close to those distant trees and that little pink kind of in the middle. Now again, this is the blocking in stage. It looks kind of crazy at this point. I lose a lot of people at this point in my painting. They think she's just creating a mess. Now these distant trees are further away and things cool off in the distance. So I'll start adding some greens later, but uh, at this point, I'm just trying to to get my values in and get some color in. And so now is the point where I'm gonna use this little thing. What is that? It looks like a little sponge. It's a piece of pipe foam insulation. I reuse it. I just wipe it off with a towel to clean it. And I'm working in sections. It's a blending tool. I'm blending my sky first. I'm trying not to contaminate the colors. And I'm going from light to my darkest values. Why am I doing this? Well, it's kind of filling in all of that blank space. Can you see that? It's softening things up to get a uh, really an impressionistic feeling for this painting. And a lot of the pastel does come off at this initial blending stage. And if you find that happening a lot when you're first painting, don't worry, that's kind of what happens with a lot of first layers. Now I do take this out and knock it off to get most of that dust off. Again, I usually work upright. Um, but now you see my hands moving so much. In the full version of this tutorial, I'm talking a lot. I actually 
cut out a lot of my talking or you know my hands moving for this but now what i'm doing is i'm reestablishing that dark again when i blend it a lot of it came off i'm giving just some ideas of maybe some trunks and branches growing up and my note right here is to remember keep a light touch when i first started with pastel painting i thought I had to create a painting that really started looking like something very quickly, and that's just not how to create a painterly and impressionistic painting. Now I'm finding some greens finally, yay! And here's what I was saying, I'm just lightly getting some greens on top of that area that I had blocked in. This is a nice uh, medium to dark green. Uh, this set, again, I'm going to brag on it. It is really a great set for beginners. I was so pleased to know that you really can have a set of pastels and create one full painting from one set of pastels. I've done it with other sets, um, but they weren't quite as affordable as this set. This is a really easy, if you're on a budget, um, it's very, very affordable. So now I got a little bit of a lighter green. I'm getting in where some of the light might be hitting some of the tops of the trees and some of those middle ground grasses. Now I'm getting even lighter. Again, I broke the pastel. I'm gonna have some green grasses that are on top. Um, it gets darker when things get in shadow or buried beneath, but now I'm getting in some of my greens that are catching a little bit more of the light. And now what happens in the shadows? Things cool off, just like I always say, we cool off in the shade, well, so do colors. So I got a pretty blue, plus it makes your painting more exciting, a pretty blue just to get in some, some fun, some color excitement and some shadowy colors. Um, now I'm just getting a little bit, I think that one's might be a little darker, and I'm using it to um, get that distant tree line a little bit darker, and I got an even darker one to uh, make it feel a little closer. I love painting things with layers or levels of perspective now I'm carving some in behind the trees to give an idea of some of those mountains or trees in the distance and uh, just peeking them in between some of the branches and uh, that really does give a sense of depth to things and also usually down where the trees are meeting the ground uh, they're a little darker a little more in shadow so you might want to go with a darker value now I want to make that last band of trees feel further away so that's why I went with a lighter blue and of course I'm doing this is called color echoing where you take colors and you incorporate them throughout your painting all right let's work on the sky a little more now I'm starting to carve into some of these trees you're gonna see me later do that even more right now the trees kind of look like blobs um, they're looking a little better but um, I'll even carve in more later now sometimes I work with my opposite hand too but I'm getting a little bit more of the sky remember when I said um, layers start applying better the more layers you add and they actually start blending together themselves you end up not having to use a blending tool anymore at all now I thought I'd use some of the same blue that I used throughout the painting in the sky again this is going to create a cohesiveness uh, throughout the painting now I got a, a neutral kind of gray color I needed a darker value around the edges of the sky around the top right and the top left and uh, this gray I normally wouldn't have gone with this color but you pick your value over color it was the right value and it also did neutralize and kind of tone down some of the blues you can see I'm, I'm actually carving into some of the trees now what I was talking Talking about that's called creating sky holes rather than painting all the branches and the leaves we carve into the tree line negatively that's called negative painting and it really does create a more painterly and believable uh, scene now I'm using some of this pretty peach I had some pinks and peaches in the sky so I just got a little bit in between the tree branches now I zoomed in a little bit notice how I still have not covered up all of my underpainting that blocking in stage you still see the warm tones underneath the grasses and that's the goal again don't press too hard or feel the need um, to just fill everything in so quickly all right here's where I'm doing a little more carving in to this tree line and you can see this painting uh, all painting really for me painting impressionistically impressionistically like this is I always say it's like a dance I work all over the whole painting not feeling the need to finish any one area 
And that too will create a connectiveness and a harmony to your painting. Again, doing a little negative painting, you see the tree branches, um, the edges are starting to take shape a little bit more. And here, that's where I zoomed in, you'll see a little more how I'm just kind of using this pastel to carve down, you can see in between things and just shaping these trees. They're in the distance, so we don't need a lot of detail. Um, and if you're a beginner artist and this is all feeling very frustrating to you, um, welcome to the club. <laughs> Same thing happened to me too, so don't get frustrated. It just takes time. Now I slowed it down and zoomed in a little more so you can see it's finally time to add some flowers to this. And I'm just using some of these lighter pastels in the set. Um, I find I get real creative with things when you are limiting yourself, like with this one set. So I thought some pretty blues and whites would be nice and harmonious with the other colors I've chosen. I'm also choosing some grays because white flowers, if I start putting them down deep into the shadowy areas, they're not gonna make sense. When flowers are buried or grasses are surrounding them, they're gonna get a little darker. So uh, I found some of those nice neutral grays worked well for that. I decided to go ahead and make the, the field a little bit further back. Um, it was a little bit too green. So here's a trick. If you need to neutralize something, that automatically made it feel further away because I added kind of a light gray on top of that green. What happens with colors when they get very far away? They neutralize. You can't see the high saturation or vibrancy as much when things are far away. They also cool off in color. They usually aren't quite as warm. Um, so those are just some little tricks. I always say painting is easy once you know a few simple rules. Now I thought, we, I had some peach in the sky, so I thought, yeah, a little bit of peach. So I just sprinkled a little bit in there. Now we gotta make some stems here. These flowers are just floating. So I got one of the pastels. I usually like to use a much thinner pastel to get my stems. And I do end up going to one other type of pastel for this painting other than that everything was from the color block set. Now this is the pastel I was talking about. It's called a Prismacolor New Pastel. I will have a link in the description of this video. You could even just get a few of these sticks or a little small set. They're very affordable. I even used it to get a little bit of the warmth and the browns up in the trees. Um, but again, other than just a couple of these Prismacolor New Pastels, um, the whole painting was done with color block and I could have continued to use color block for the stems and grasses as well. So this is a point where I'm having fun. I've got everything established and I'm just getting some life and motion and energy to this piece and making some strokes that are a bit more lively, but at the same time, trying not to get too carried away with it. This is a point where you kind of want to be careful. Now I decided to get a pastel color that was a little lighter and it's kind of a pretty little neutral green that's in this set, um, just to give a little bit more neutrality to some of the, the treetops and even a little bit to some of those distant trees. Now I'm getting a, this is my final, very hard I'm pressing here to make some of the flowers be a little bit more of a focal point. This was a little pretty golden color. It is a Prismacolor New Pastel, but this is what I like to do at the end of the painting. Find a color that, I call it a punchy color, just to add some fun to the piece. And didn't that do it? Here is a close up of the final painting. I hope you enjoyed this. Again, you can slow this down on YouTube if you'd like to watch it. If you want the full tutorial, consider becoming a patron on my Patreon page, or you can also buy the full lesson. All those links will be in the description of this video. All right, everyone, God bless and happy painting.